This video is a short tutorial I made showing how to model floor rebates. Okay, so this video we're going to talk about um, slab rebates and how to do them within Revit. By default, Revit doesn't really have any um, slab rebate tools. We've got some opening tools which, by their definition, will, will chop right through the element, um, not necessarily partially through them. The only way that I can see um, out of the box that we can do uh, rebates to a degree is just using two elements where we've in essence got a floor with an inner and then we make basically another element and then we can then just join them together using the join tool and then we've got basically um, what is a, a, a rebate um, there. Now that is structurally is the way to do it because we've still got the uh, in, this case, in this case say a 100 millimeter concrete slab and inside the rebate we've got a 100 millimeter thick concrete slab. These other families here just subtract from whatever you've got. So in this case if I've got a, if I've got a 100 millimeter thick family and I subtract 20 millimeters I've then got a 80 millimeter of floor. So if it's you want to be structurally accurate using an, a, a floor outline method might be good um, but again there has some pluses and minuses around it. The method that I normally use is some families and I'll show you um, what some of them do. So I've basically got two types. I've got a face based set and I've got a line based set. Now, in the face space, I've got a lot of them um, are instance based. So, let's say in this case here, it's a, a rebate rectangle, it's a face based one, and I can then just stretch it to suit. Now, you might, in some instances, have some standardized sizes that you want, so you can do them as a type base. Horses, of course, it doesn't really matter. Um, the line based family, which is what I sometimes have for, have for garage doors, um, in this case, I've just chosen line base because we want to define it by two points. It doesn't actually cut the element. It's a bit of a pain. You've actually got to use the cut tool and then it does its job. So that's the downside to these line base ones. The face base ones automatically stick and cut to whichever element you want. I can place these other ones on vertical face or work plane. I can click it, it gets highlighted in green and then I can then just place them wherever I want. Now there's some other different shapes here. I've got circles, I've got a slot, I've got another slot, um, I've got a garage door and whichever one you want to really use. There's a whole lot of different parameters in here to adjust the shapes. But in essence they're kind of all the same. We are chopping an element with a family and then we're adjusting its shape as required. Now the cool thing about modeling these things is we can then just tag them. So in this case let's say for the garage door opening, doesn't matter which family we're using, I use my multi category tags because I just like using those. I can just put a tag on it and have a little note somewhere or a, I can schedule them what they are and then they can be referred to it and then I can simply just put a dimension on that the builder can then do set outs for. Nice thing too with these is if we want to, we've got a lot of these things and we're trying to set them out for a builder, we can actually give them um, again a description this is an R9 rebate and then I can call up on a schedule what an R9 rebate is is it a 100 millimeter diameter is it a 75 millimeter diameter instead of having to do a dimension for every single one of them we can be quite sly in how we do them okay so that's the rebates um, and like before, 
I'll put them up on my Google Drive for you to access. Thanks for watching and please leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you later.